So you come from the land of Tanzania, as we all know. Is it natural in Gwalior to be a born artist? Uh, so I was born in Gwalior, but I've lived in many places in India. Uh, I've lived in uh, UP Meerut. I have lived in Ahmedabad. I've lived in Bangalore, and uh, I had this sort of uh, a desire, uh, so to speak, to travel in India before I go anywhere out of India. You know, it's sort of. uh slightly different because i think we aspire to leave our country the point we are in colleges and thinking what are careers but for some reason i had in my heart to travel my own country so i've lived in many places i've also lived in the himalayas i've lived in sanskar i've lived in uh, ladakh i have trekked there i've done long very long very treacherous treks there and i've learned a great deal by in, uh, through those experiences so I think I belong to all those places. Where did you encounter street art and became interested in it? Like, I like I want to pursue that thing. Uh, it, it, it one point of view would be it happened very organically. Uh, I had seen art, as I said, by my grandmothers who were drawing on the wall, but. i never consider uh, you know i it it never occurs to you that it's something professionally you can pursue or it's sort of a genre or a thing to do it's just so seamlessly part of everyday life that you don't see it in a separate sense it's much later i started to see art as something you can pursue as a career and uh, it was just a thing to enjoy because the experience of art was something i loved in the beginning tell us more about your drawing technique like how do you manage to like mm. set up the whole process how's your process i love drawing so i've been drawing for a long while i have a background in animation okay so there you have to draw a lot i i also have done work in uh, graphic novels and comic books yeah. so there also you have to draw a lot and i uh, uh, plus the draw, if you draw for a long long time uh, that process becomes a little seamless and uh, my intention now with drawing and with my technique is how can i uh, draw in a way which is uh, which becomes a bit of a performance for people because art is a slow process compared to music and and yeah. and sports yeah. right it's a very slow process so how can i uh, you know compress the process a little bit and uh, not by not by forcing it or making or sensationalizing it or uh, you know cutting cutting it down and editing too many uh, things from it but uh, truly compressing it making it more fluid uh, so the way i'm drawing my life pieces i just take my brush and i with a very basic brush waterproof black ink and i just dive into the canvas and i have something in the mind to start with and i just create that onto the canvas as uh, people are walking by and i'm having conversations with them so the more i've done this the more i've become used to the multitasking but now the process is very very fluid and you have uh, like learned this art somewhere in some of the like institutions or so i went to nid national okay. institute of design i did okay. animation there yes and before that i had worked for when i was in still in school i had worked for in my summer vacations i had worked for some comic book companies and other than that i think uh, i just loved drawing and i think that it maybe it was subconscious it, it was therapeutic in a subconscious way because when you're going through certain hard circumstances uh, or you immerse yourself in a different world right and when you immerse yourself in a creative world in a way it would nurture you back so for me drawing became like that uh, i also uh, in i i i i'm also a sports person so i've played sports for a really long time so i think sports and art i consider in my life uh, sort like of doing meditation yeah it's it's very, it's it becomes meditative if it's not that in the beginning it sort of becomes meditative and uh, a lot of times i feel that my process as an artist is very much like it's not so much of an artist it's more of a sportsman because i have uh, because in sports you learn discipline you know as an artist is very hard to be disciplined yeah what really fascinate fascinates me is that you have invented your own style of genre 
you are a painter graphic designer and i would like to add one thing i am a natural storyteller so you target different audiences in one shot like you can shoot with one bullet <laughs> several people how do you manage to balance out all of them like do you think them as separate things or you just see it as a one yeah first of all i'm not shooting anyone <laughs> <laughs> no, uh no i'm just i'm just kidding of yeah. course uh i think it's uh, uh, again i think it has to be uh an innate drive i think it has the drive to know has to be intrinsic uh you can be driven by your curiosity you know in the beginning and uh, that curiosity may have a very exciting temperament and uh, you know it it it's thrilling but eventually it would require you to be slightly disciplined about it it would require you to persevere certain circumstances uh and in life in general you will have to go through a lot of obscurity you have to go through a lot of confusing circumstances uh and but that innate relationship you have with creativity uh gives you a certain point of view to these circumstances in life the strong circumstances in life then seem like teachers right so you are learning you sort of become a person who's trying to at least attempting to learn from everything and in one way or the other if you transform in if you transform your attitude in uh, uh, to that and you start to imbibe from whatever is happening around you not just the books you're reading but people you're meeting yeah. things you're observing you're standing in a bus stand you're observing life around you and you're trying to link all these different layers of everyday everyday life to mythology to to cultural uh, fabric of a country to the way people are thinking in that place to how people are connected all around the world and you sort of become an observer uh, in that sense and you truly truly uh, take pleasure in this activity so i guess for me it's uh, i exist in that space i I I'm just very grateful that it connects with people when I when it's manifested as a painting or as a book or as a story when I share something on my Instagram uh, I usually always share stories with my art uh and when people sort of really read it and and indulge in it and engage in it uh I just feel grateful because you know that part of uh, uh that part is never a guarantee you know it's very fleeting it's very impermanent that today is there tomorrow it might not be there So I am personally anchored in the joy of the experience of what I get by being an observer and a storyteller and uh, I leave the rest to the universe. In your opinion is there something like creativity in terms of art or it's just a small twisted imitation of the creation? Mm that's like, right. Are we creative or it's just that we are just uh, observing and twisting things? You know creativity if you uh, at least the way i define creative <coughs> creativity is uh, connecting uh, different things the idea of connecting two very separate things or uh, or let's say connecting your inner world with the outer world right and finding uh, an expression or finding a bridge to 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 showcase that uh, if you want to take it to another step uh because first stage would always be uh mental like it will be cerebral you know it will always happen in your head uh that let's say you're feeling uh, sad today yeah. and you look at the clouds and maybe the clouds may match the color of the kind of sadness you're feeling inside so in that moment your mind and heart are joining these two dimensions mm-hmm. something which is inside and something which is outside uh i feel creativity is about alignment aligning various things uh finding connections between various things so let's say someone is dividing a country then creativity would be to unifying it you know mm-hmm. creativity would be to join them but creativity at some level will not be just about the good things too it's about it's not about good and bad it's about the truth it's about maybe not just looking at the sky and and feeling the sky is sad and i am sad but it it may also become that there is a kind of a beauty in this sadness and if not beauty there is a certain contemplative quality in this sadness and it's making you think about life hence if you were not sad if you would not have gone through this tragic time you would not have understood life first time in humanity's history we are talking about protecting about talking to protect this planet it's like a infant talking about to protect his mother <laughs> feels like but that's the reality 
do you think Vriksha Dutam as an artwork too will have that impact on the ecological issues that are going on just to like create awareness? I think awareness is important because uh, genuinely a lot of people do not know what's going on uh, because the way uh, <clears throat> our lives have become it's bombarded by content and it's bombarded by content which is trying to sell you something it's bombarded by content which is making you feel inadequate and that's sort of the larger chunk of the content and the content which is which can help you uh, evolve your thinking uh, which may come around boring in the beginning but has a longer term uh, value to it uh, or just things which are important to raise your awareness right and uh, create a nice interactive space for you sometimes that content may not uh, uh, come into the forefront so awareness i feel any anyone who's trying to create an awareness for anything good i think that's that's always uh, i always encourage that personally and always feel good about that too but now the thing is to make that awareness engaging uh, and that's a different challenge because <clears throat> it can if it's boring it's not going to really uh, hit a point it's not going to hit a point so what happens when you try to make something uh, entertaining you end up sensationalizing it too much and sometimes it goes completely away from uh, you won't show the depths of that subject matter uh, and that's always sort of a you know a, a, as i said a challenge and you have to understand how you're going to uh, sort of uh, go about uh, raising awareness and yet make it entertaining yet make it engaging uh, and it it will take a few attempts from everyone to understand that uh, because say let i can feel the urgency that this is very important but if i'm not clear in my communication let's say there's fire in my house yeah. but i can't speak the yeah. words properly then no one will know what's really happening so the clarity is important and it has to start from the creator so i have been thinking about vrikshadutam for a while but i felt that rather than uh, you know declaring it out and making something on it uh, it's important for me to uh, immerse in this thing myself and ask myself certain questions about it how ma- what how much do i know about trees uh, i ha- i have always loved gardening when i was a little kid i used to plant uh, trees and play around trees and you know climb up and you know pick fruits and watch birds i used to plant a lot of flower trees so i have never liked people you know decorating their weddings and places with you know plucked flowers and cut flowers and uh, i've had a certain sort of thinking on it from the very beginning and i feel that uh, we don't really know them you know if you ask a regular person all of us actually for that matter of fact how much you even know about your parents have you sat with them and have you ever asked them you know tell me your story from the very beginning till now i am just going to listen to every day of whatever you can remember so we have not really done that so that says that in general our civilization in overall has become very self indulgent that we are more interested in ourselves or our preferences or our own things so it's hard to move out of yourself the only time you're moving out of yourself is something has prompted you that you want to find something even about yourself that you may want to find something about yourself and then you want to talk to your father or you want to talk to your mother and that interaction leads you to other kinds of thoughts uh so the vrikshadutam <coughs> for me has been a personal contemplation for a very long time i've done a lot of work on uh, mythology i love reading dif- about different cultures uh, about different mythologies from all around the world and uh, especially indian mythology i felt that all these gods and goddesses are anyways guardians of nature and they uh, they were created uh, to be communicating the phenomena of nature uh, that's why they all have different colors that's why have, we have so many gods uh, that's why uh, let's say the ashwins are the you know rays of the sun sorry the adityas are the rays of the sun the ashwins are your, the healer aspect of nature <clears throat> the maruts are the wind gods so all of them are phenomena in nature your wind currents your ocean currents your magnetic pulls your your electrical impulses in the universe all of that put together creates this beautiful algorithm about how the organism of the earth actually works and how the con- and how the solar system works actually 
so it, it, so it's a it's it's a combination and an amalgamation of a lot of scientific things astrological thing cosmic thing geological things and that has been told to us through these stories and somewhere or the other that's gotten lost so the idea with mythology in the beginning was to bring this uh, and now i'm slowly uh, shifting uh, to be bringing uh, instead of using gods and goddesses as my main uh, characters I'm using a lot of trees and they still look like gods and goddesses because we've had a culture of worshipping the tree uh, Shiva is basically the mountain and uh, and his uh, hair and the matted hair and the jatas are the roots of those trees which are within this mountain and holding it together and the rivers coming out of the mountain so uh, now I'm trying to bring this aspect and you know a lot more prominently and uh, a lot more uh, centrally in, in the works so with, with Vrikshadutam that would be the idea and also to do uh, subject matter based on trees all around the world do you suggest any secrets for success for the budding artist uh, there's so much scope now compared to wh what things were even when I started uh, if anyone wanted to become an artist before me it was not even considered a profession so I think we are living in a time of uh, abundant opportunities. So I think opportunities there, uh, a lot of way to market yourself are there, a lot of way to put your work out there, uh, those mediums are there. I think what, uh, is, uh, what I would uh, you know, uh, uh, suggest humbly would be to focus on more like uh, discipline and commitment to what you do and explo exploration of what you are interested in and uh, being responsible to certain things. I, I would rather uh, focus on those virtues because everything else is sort of given in today's time. If you are good, you're going to find uh, a fantastic uh, job or you're going to uh, find a great opportunity uh, in art or in, 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 in any creative field, you know. How do you deal with situations which do not happen according to your way? That's life. Eventually you understand that is life. And uh, you learn from it. You learn from it and that's what makes you, you a storyteller. <laughs> you know? Because that is what makes you a storyteller. Because you, a story storytelling is basically you have to have certain conflicts and, uh, di and, 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 and different approaches to resolve it. That's basically more, more or less most stories. Eventually you will hit upon a conflict and then you will have to think cleverly about it or with certain presence of mind or... Uh, accept the situation, move on, whatever way you have to, uh, you know, uh, adopt to resolve that situation, uh, you will resolve. So, uh, when circumstances and things don't play your way, uh, of course, you will learn from it, you will reflect on it. Uh, uh, at the same time, uh, I usually tell myself that it's done and move on. Because to put a lot of time into to, to invest a lot of time just thinking the same thing that a that thing didn't happen that thing didn't happen I usually try to think okay what is the next thing I can do uh, it was hard when I did my graphic novel uh, Krishna a journey within it it's published by image comics and it's there on Amazon worldwide and it's even translated in Italian I did not know that this would happen when I started the book and I also did not know that it's gonna take me four years I thought it's going I can finish it in a year's time so you realize the scale of something when you commit to it slowly when you're into it you realize the magnitude of what you're doing so a lot of those things you discover when you commit to something and it happens in all your different kind of relationships when you commit to a very big college and suddenly you're there you realize oh my god i have to work so hard at my thesis and so many assign assignments are there but I've embraced those challenges, embrace those challenges, do your best. And even if you fail or if it does not happen to your, uh, you know, thinking, uh, uh, to your expectations, uh, at least you can tell yourself you tried your best. Can you narrate one story which has been with you for the longest time period, which has been into you? One There's so many stories I, I love. I having like you are a storyteller, but one which... You would share with you know I must I think I, I'm more of a story seeker because I love collecting and listening to stories because I feel there are books which are telling you stories 
there are people who are telling you stories and then there are rivers which are telling you stories you have to really listen to a river and the story it's telling then plants are telling you a story air is telling you a story but you, those ones you have to really listen because there is an etheric communication between your cells and the cells of, cells of the environment right and that's planting a lot of seeds of memories of 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 thoughts you know into you and they grow into something which may be uh fragmented thoughts maybe uh certain stories certain ideas so you have to, so i i feel that i try to i try my best to be uh a good listener and and a seeker uh, i'll pick two stories let's say i love the story of uh, nachiketa and yama because you have a little kid who's in conversation about very profound things and asking questions about the greatest mysteries to death so you have this innocent beginning in conversation with the uh, uh with this you know uh, demonic looking end so it's uh, i i love that setting in the story and how yama is tempting him with all kinds of uh, uh, riches and and giving him kingdoms and he says i don't want any of that and i and i want to know the secrets of the universe i really relate to that because uh, i i f- i feel like that myself that if i meet someone who knows all the secrets of the universe i would love to just sit and listen to him you know so i love that story uh and the sec- and the other story i really love uh, is the story of the descent of the ganges and how bhagiratha uh, paid the penance and did his tapasya and brought the ganga down for me it it has uh, a, a lot of different uh, meanings and interpretation because i i, I don't think so uh, that it's just a story about a river coming down because it took many generations of kings till bhagiratha for and many other constraints before which ganga descended on the earth so i feel that uh, it's also the story of my grandmother's aspiration my mother's aspirations and how perhaps in my generation it's coming to manifest is coming it's 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 sort of coming to some fruition it's finding uh, a way in the world right if given a choice they would have loved to pursue a lot of lot of things they would have loved to maybe even travel the world but it did not happen in their time so it's so it takes a few generation for something to open up and and become a reality so so i look at it from that reflect reflection to uh i'm actually doing a, st- a story where i'm using uh, i'm i'm trying to do an animation uh, project where i'm trying to use this story uh in our everyday how this descent of the ganges and uh, when you really uh, you know try your best and something phenomenal happens but still it has taken many generations of effort right that bhagiratha represents many generations of effort and something spectacular happens in his generation but that was dreamt by people before him and uh, so uh, i i feel that's very beautiful because i am very grateful to everyone who's encouraged me everyone who's come before me around them the times were not uh, so open minded perhaps the times around them did not have so many possibilities so we are in a very fortunate time if you actually see and it's totally on to us the way we want to shape the world and where we want to take the ganges you know where we want to take this uh, all the resources and all the possibilities how we want want to route them and in what sense we can nurture the planet how can we nurture each other how can we nurture you know uh, uh, our our next phase of civilization you know so uh, so that would be one of my most favorite stories